Uh, optimal way to view it is through side-by-side -side view. And remember, whether we are together in the same building within the same four walls, we are together spiritually. So it's great to have you all with us. We begin our worship here on the 16th, 13th Sunday of Pentecost. Unbelievable, this is now the last Sunday in August. Uh, in a time in which time is so different as opposed it has, it, it's been just with the pandemic, not being able to go places, so much being in disarray. It's amazing how fast things still seem to move. And now we are last Sunday in August and we have the Shrum family. So here's Rebecca and Henry, or Rebecca, that's, <coughs> that's Henry and Ella, Eleanor that are going to welcome us to worship. This summer has certainly been a paradox with everything that's happening in our country and in the world. Um, it's been a charmed summer for Ellie and Henry because I've been able to work remotely. We've spent more time at the Cape with my parents than I can ever recall. Um, they've had time with their cousins and with beach friends and been enjoying the seemingly infinite hot summer sunny days. Um, of course, I'm as an adult, I'm acutely aware of how little time we've gotten to spend with Frank's family since we've needed to be outdoors and distanced, and how many people have had none of these kind of family visits or vacations this summer. I've had to rake the leaves twice because they're so dry they're falling off the trees, but the upside is we haven't had to mow the lawn because it's dead, and we've had our first bumper crop of tomatoes since moving to New Hampshire, so thank you hot sunny weather for that. Frank's work has gone from remote to full-time at UNH. Um, as of this Friday, he'll have worked 19 consecutive days preparing for the return of students. So again, we're, we're very grateful for his work and for UNH reopening, but at the same time, um, it's a, a lot of stress for him. And you know, overall, we're feeling very um, blessed um, to be able to have this time with family and friends, but also stressed by the, the weight of the world. It reminds me of the Grateful Dead lyric of every silver lining has a touch of gray. We hope everyone else is doing well and finding more silver than gray these days. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Um, you touch on something that really will be a theme for my sermon. Um, the weight of the world just seems heavy on us. Um, and so I'll mention it then. It gets mentioned then, but I'll mention it now. We are going to have a service of lament, kind of to name the weight of the world that is upon us and to join our voices with those who have gone before, so many psalms that are written are psalms of lament, just kind of crying out and saying the way things are going doesn't seem like the way they should be. So thank you for naming that and just to recognize the good fortune that, we, uh, that you are having in your lives and hopefully we can see that in our lives as well. For our gathering song, it's not a virtual choir. Uh, I took that out, Mark, but we're going to have the bell choir, which we had it in a different spot. As we have said before, uh, Leslie Darling, uh, their second from the left, has been a member at Holy Trinity since 1974. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that, Leslie, but I think that's what she said on Tuesday night. And she has just been um, involved in so many ways over the years, from bell choir to regular choir to VBS to Sunday school to Christmas pageants. Um, making crosses out of palms on Easter morning in so many ways. And so we have uh, a couple ways in which we want to honor and thank Leslie. Normally, you know, maybe there'd be a gathering after worship and we should have cake and we could all gather around and give her a hug and say thank you that way. Uh, but since we can't do that, we have a video of the bell choir. And then later on in the service, Leslie did another one final liturgical dance for us that was recorded this past week. And so we thank you, Leslie, for doing that. So as these come up, while the worship is not about Leslie, we want to honor her. And people, please feel free to uh, thank Leslie during that liturgical dance or during this choir for ways in which she has impacted you or impacted the church. But here's the bell choir, I Surrender All.
Thank you very much. We continue our service with confession and forgiveness. Together, let us say, most merciful God, we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue our service with a liturgical dance recorded by Leslie this week in the sanctuary on Tuesday with uh, live music as well. So thank you, Leslie, one of the many ways in which you have blessed the congregation. Spirit, we embrace all life. Grace 
If we were all together, I think uh, <laughs> we'd give you a standing ovation, Leslie. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> Beth, Dot and Kurt, thank you also for the music you played. Uh, so fitting, celebrate. We continue our service with the first reading. A reading from Romans, chapter 12. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it is depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you, Frank, for the first reading. We continue with the gospel reading also from Frank. A reading from Matthew, chapter 16. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Frank. The sermon this morning, uh, we had two readings, which I'm really glad we had two readings this morning. Uh, 
we always have that option. But let love be genuine from Romans 12. Uh, there's two videos for this sermon. Uh, one, I talk about the uh, service of the lament we'll have tonight. That's about five minutes. And then we have the regular sermon, the regular sermon, whatever that might be, uh, which is only about seven minutes. I'm going to be honest right now, and I really struggled preaching this weekend uh, with everything that is happening. And so I think you will hear that come forth. And where do we turn for hope um, when it seems like things might be hopeless? So um, I hope you can join us tonight as you are able. Uh, you'll hear about how to throughout this uh, next part. But I'll just start the sermon here. Good morning, everybody from Holy Trinity. Um, we're in front of the whiteboard. Before I get into my sermon, I need to, I don't know if you want to say confess something, whatever it might be. I'm feeling heavy. <laughs> Feeling heavy lately. You know that feeling? You just look around and you wonder what is going on. The problems seem insurmountable. I listed a few of them on the board, right? We've been talking a lot about racism going on. And just recently we had another shooting, take your Blake shooting. We've had protests, we've had riots and looting. Uh, we've had vigilante killings, right? And that's just one aspect of it that seems to be prevailing on the news. We're in the middle of a presidential election, so we've had party conventions, the Democratic National Convention, the Republican National Convention, and depending on how you're feeling about things, maybe your blood boils, uh, depending on what you are watching. Uh, there's Hurricane Laura that just went through the Gulf Coast and parts of Texas and parts of... Uh, Louisiana, and it was, I even heard words that it was an unsurvivable storm. Uh, and then you see some of the devastation, and it's unbelievable, a miracle that it wasn't even worse than it was. I don't know if you've seen this one. <laughs> 39 children that were missing <laughs> were found in Georgia. Can you imagine 39 parents out there wondering where their kids have been? 39 were found at one spot. How much do we not know about wildfires in California that are raging? This goes along with the presidential elections. A QAnon theory that is just, right, these conspiracy theories just keep getting to be deeper and deeper and people, more and more people keep seem to be falling into them or following them. And those are just all things that we maybe all have in common. And then we have our own personal baggage, things going in our own life uh, that might be weighing on us or sitting heavy with us. At times it just seems to be too much, doesn't it? So this is what I'm inviting you to. Uh, tonight, 7 p.m. here at church, out underneath, underneath the tent, weather permitting, but it should be good. We're going to have what I'm calling a service of lament. Service of lament. It's going to be maybe half hour, a little bit more. I invite you to come, bring a chair, bring a face mask. Uh, it'd be great if people could sign up on um, Sign Up Genius. Uh, Mark will post that in the chat options here. We'll also have that on our Facebook page, have that on our website. Normally we limit things to about 25 people because that's about the many people we can have safely gather underneath the tent or in that fenced off area. But if we need to go bigger than that, we can. We'll just move outside the fenced off area. So if you come, don't park right along the fence. But I want to have a service of lament. I don't have the words. To address everything that is going on. And so instead, what we're going to do, we're going to hear words from Scripture. We're going to start off with Romans 8. The Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And then we're going to read Psalms. It, the church has a rich history. People of faith have a rich history of reading the Psalms, of crying out to God and saying, where are you?
This isn't what we thought it was going to be. We want you to be active and present in the world right now. We desperately need you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read Psalms of Lament to add our voices to the voices of the past that have cried out. And after a psalm is read, then we will have some music played. Jonathan Bach will be there and just play a piece. And then we'll read another psalm and then have another piece of music. The whole idea is simply to be able to come together, to sit in our discomfort together. One of those things that is so hard is we haven't been able to gather on a regular basis, even though we've provided other ways to gather physically even on Tuesday evenings or Wednesday mornings, but it's been in smaller groups or even larger. Is what Zoom has allowed us to do is to grab, gather spiritually, even though we ain't, aren't gathered as physically as we once were. But let us gather tonight at 7 to sit in our discomfort, to sit in our grief, and to use the words of people of the past to cry out to God. To say we need you. We're looking for you. And we're desperate for you. We'll go right into our sermon. Please join me tonight if you'd like. <laughs> Now it's time for the sermon, which might seem like an awkward transition. It is for me to think about how do I go from sharing all that we might be struggling with here to now preaching what I hope to be is the good news. Um, I'm going to keep this brief because I was thinking about this passage in which it is a follow-up to last week's Jesus conversation with Peter and the disciples when they are talking about um, who are you and Jesus, it comes up that Jesus is the Messiah. And uh, so now we get a follow-up to that conversation. What does the Messiah look like? And Jesus goes on to continue it and he says he must go to Jerusalem, suffer and die and three days rise again. And Peter says, I forbid that. Jesus. That is not the way the story works. And Jesus rebukes him. Now Peter goes from the rock on which the church will be built to now get behind me, Satan. And then he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must pick up their cross and follow me. And it got me thinking about one thing I've really enjoyed about the Zoom services that we weren't doing before when we were able to meet in our sanctuary. And I've heard a lot of feedback on that also is that we've heard people share their faith stories. And we're about to hear one coming up from um, Rebecca and Frank. I don't know if it's one or both of them I haven't seen yet. But, and I think about my own faith story. People have shared why they go to church or why they are a Christian or what faith means to them. And it's always been very good things, which is great, right? It sh I, I'm glad that it's good. It's my own way. My parents were Christians. My parents went to church. I went to church. I always fit. I had friends there. It made sense to me. I always heard that I was loved. I didn't have this overriding sense of guilt, like what's wrong with you. It was a very natural thing, easy to fit into. And that was the message I always heard is you belong, you belong, you belong. But what if we heard a different message? Not that you belong wouldn't work. It still fits. It still is present. And it's not what's wrong with you, which is what we feel like so many people talk about with this overriding sense of guilt that they feel like they always heard from church. But what if we heard these words from Jesus this morning where he talks about, if anyone wants to be my disciple, they must pick up their cross and follow him. We've talked about this before, uh, this phrase, pick up your cross and follow me. Oftentimes we feel it is something that has been imposed on us. It's bad luck. Um, we lose a job. Our marriage falls apart. Someone is diagnosed with a disease that we don't know what the prognosis, their outcome is going to be. And we hear things or he said things like, I guess this is just my cross to bear. Let's be clear about something. What happened to Jesus isn't just something that happened to him because he was passive and it was bad luck. It happened to him because of the way he lived and the way he acted and the way he spoke to the powers that be. They then 
didn't like it, <laughs> didn't like what he had to say, and they killed him for it. So what if we said to each other, what if we said to prospective Christians, what if we were told by our parents growing up, hey, you're a Christian, but you know what it means? You're going to suffer. You're going to wonder. You're going to doubt. At some point, you're going to be like Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane the night before he was about to be crucified on the cross and say, I don't want to do this. Take it from me. Would people still want to join us? Is this maybe why we oftentimes, I, I, I honestly believe this, we sugarcoat it or we tweak or not even just tweak, we totally change what it means to be a Christian because if we really let it be what it is, who would want to be part of that? So we had all of these things up here and how do we behave? What does it mean to be a Christian in the midst of everything that is going on? It is so hard and we come up with different answers or sometimes the answers we come up with, we don't want to participate in because of what it might mean for us. <laughs> and so we get so overwhelmed with everything that we just want to say, forget it. That's why I'm so glad the passage that we have to accompany um, the gospel reading this morning. We haven't done much other readings besides the gospel readings that we've been on Zoom, and that has a lot to do with because of time. But this morning, it just seemed so necessary to have this reading from Romans when we don't know where to look, when we do feel like we are turned upside down, when it does feel like we are losing our life and we don't know where to turn. We hear these words from Romans that I think if we don't know where to turn, maybe we can hold on to this. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. I'll do one another in showing honor. <coughs> I'll do one another in showing honor. I'm going to jump ahead. Contribute to the needs of strangers. I, I can contribute to the needs of saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Maybe these are the words that we need this morning when we don't know where to turn. We can let our love be genuine, trusting that that is the love we have from God for us, even when we can't see it. Amen. We continue with our offering this morning multiple ways to give. Um, you see them there on your screen. I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca and let's hear what she has to say. One of my college friends was from Long Island and she was the daughter of German immigrants and was forced to go to German school on the weekends, which always made me laugh because I didn't know anyone from Long Island who was a German or a Lutheran before I met her. But one of the things that she said that has stayed with me all these years was that the problem with Lutherans is that if you tell people, you don't really have to go to church, it's okay, you can go pray under a tree. People will go pray under a tree and then they won't go to church. I've been thinking that about a lot lately over the last six months of Zoom church and um, the ability that anyone, anywhere, at any time could watch any church service online. 
And why do we choose to worship together as a church family? I'm sure there's also tons of Lutheran and Christian content that one could find online if one wanted to. It makes me think of another story, um, this time involving a client. She was someone I met through a mutual friend. We had a strictly business relationship. We weren't friends beforehand. She'd overcome a lot of hardship in her life, which she was very open with sharing um, with me. Very professional, very direct, very no-nonsense person. Not one to get into a lot of emotion, even when she was explaining these terrible life stories to me. But one day at the end of a meeting, and this is after we'd known each other for a few years, she said, I'm really glad that you're a Christian. And I was kind of taken aback because of all the things that we talked about, faith wasn't one of them. I didn't even know that she really went to church. So I asked her why it was important to her, and she said, I would have worked with you anyway because so-and-so recommended you. But when you told, told me once in passing that you went to church, I was so relieved. And when I asked her why, she said it was because if there's ever a situation where she's having a hard time or there's some sort of emergency, it's important for her to know that she's working with someone who's coming from the same faith-based perspective. And so I think that that's why it's important to me. Because by having this faith community, it's not just me following God and Jesus, how I think is important, but also having a community of other believers around me is so important that I know that I know people that are coming from the faith based, same faith-based perspective. It's obviously not to say that we'll always agree on everything. Clearly, in recent times, we've had a lot of hearty political and partisan conversations. And if anything, we don't always agree on everything. Um, And in a way, that's important too, right? Having little kids, it's important for them to grow up meeting people, other social groups, socioeconomic groups, backgrounds, ages, um, family structures that they wouldn't normally come across in their normal family and school lives. So we're a little micro, our community of faith can be a little microcosm of a greater community as well. Um, I think it's also important for my kids to understand that they're part of something in the world. I grew up in a small Missouri Synod church in Connecticut. And when we went to the national conference, I think it was in 1993, there were five of us from our high school group who went, one of whom was Stephanie Goopel. I have the photos to prove it. We both had kind of big hair and big bangs <laughs> back in the day. Um, but anyway, imagine this little group of five of us from our small church, and suddenly we're at the national convention, and there were thousands of other Lutheran teens. And it wasn't that I doubted my faith before that. I really haven't. It was that being there made me recognize that it was part of something bigger in our country and bigger in the world than our small church congregation. And that's really what I want for my kids. I want them to learn not just the Christian faith, but about how they could live it in the world and being part of the community, especially right now where there's so much skepticism and secularism, and they'll probably be in the distinct minority of of church-going kids. I want them to feel like they have a faith community around them. I also kind of think of our church community as um, a sports team if you think of it that way, you know, we're practicing our faith. When we train together, we're more likely to stick with it, right? And my years as a runner, I definitely ran farther and faster and more consistently when I was training as part of a team. So I like to think of what pastor says that, you know, our faith is not about what we do on Sunday mornings. It's about how we live it in the world. But I think what we do on Sunday mornings, that if you think of that as as training to practice our faith, helps us to go out into the world and, and be the Christians that we're meant to be. I kind of think that our church um, message sums it up. You know, I need to be, I need to that come together part before I can um, grow in faith and serve the Lord. Thank you, Rebecca. I greatly appreciate your words for all of us this morning. All right, looks like our numbers are back up. So we will continue with prayers. So we'll have a video, it's, may peace be with you. It's, it's based on or uses the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a little over two minutes. As that plays, please use the chat feature to type in your prayers. When peace like a river 
Let us pray. Lord, there are times in which knowing what to do is confusing or hard. When we aren't sure, let us look to love. Let us ask ourselves, what is the loving thing to do? And let us have the courage to do that. We lift all these prayer concerns that were just typed out before you, up to you. We know that they don't encompass everything going on in our lives. There are some that are too painful to even mention. There are some that we are not aware of. And so whether they were typed, whether they were said, whether they're simply thought, or whether they're unknown, we ask you to be present in them all. In your name we pray. Amen. Continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Oh, <laughs> that might be my favorite rendition of the Lord's Prayer so far. Thank you very much, Ellie and Henry. Some announcements. Remember, we, we gather every Tuesday evening underneath the tent. <laughs> it's been starting to get darker earlier. We did purchase some outdoor cafe lights. So we continue meeting without having to change the time, uh, at least for the time being. So join us there, 7 to 7.30. Also on Wednesday morning, although this might be changing uh, with school starting up, uh, 11 to 11.30, we'll try one more time. And then um, as it becomes more difficult, maybe we'll change that time in which uh, we're able to gather for more, which you might say more kid-friendly, but remember, Everybody's welcome at any time in which we meet. Doesn't matter your age. 
Also remember, uh, tonight at 7 o'clock, our service of lament, we don't have a, a slide for that, uh, but we can mention it. Join us 7 o'clock this evening uh, as we sit together, read psalms from the past uh, with our voices today and hear music played back and forth. Pop-Up Pantry, uh, it is really going extremely well. We thank you for all the donations that we have. I need to show this next slide real quick because we are out of food pretty much. This past week, we put out 20 bags of food along with assorted produce, uh, and it was all taken. And you can see that's a picture of our closet, pantry closet on the left, where the vast majority of food has been put out. So if you are able to grocery shop, and drop off food at church. I'm gonna go back a slide so you can see what we are looking for. Sorry about that. Uh, please drop off food. Or if we know uh, each bag of food costs approximately $15, you can give directly to the pop-up pantry, either through the church website or through your Alexio app. You can designate the fund in which you wanna donate food <coughs> and um, donate food that way. Uh, or donate money that way. And so people who set it up can go shopping ahead of time to purchase those food. And right now, Paulette, uh, I'm going to mispronounce your name, Paulette, so I'm sorry, Suaras, uh, Soros, and Christina Dolcino, Mark Bellavo, um, have been doing a lot of work with that. And I'm sorry if I have forgotten names of others who are participating. But we need food if we're going to put more food out on Wednesday. We need more food over these next few days. So we either donate money or drop off food at the church. There are bins outside to drop your food in as well. So thank you for everybody who's helped to make that happen. Unfortunately, it is a needed thing in our community. Uh, boy, I'm having a hard time with slides this morning. I apologize. Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. I have recorded all 17 chapters. Go to our website, click on Storytime with Pastor Tim, and you can find directions to the Google Drive, which has each of those chapters, each chapter is about 15 minutes. Uh, you can listen to it while you're in the car. You can watch it, um, whatever you need to, but those are available for everybody in the congregation. We continue with BYOB. We're on, I think this will be six out of seven as we work through the video series, The Bible Tells Me So with Old Testament scholar Peter Enns, but that has been going well. Great conversation. Please join us for that this week. As always, if you just need some peace and you want to come sit in our sanctuary, that is always an option. There's a sign up genius on our website. It goes out in the tidings each week. I think it's on the Mondays one in which those go out. Uh, if you want to come in and sit in our sanctuary, there are directions we ask you to follow if you're going to come and do that, but it is open for you to do. Birthdays and anniversaries, if people would like to uh, wish somebody a happy birthday or wish them or announce an anniversary, let's do that now. Birthdays and anniversaries that people would like to share. I know it takes a moment for people to type those in. Happy memory, Wednesday, uh, 41 years since Jessica uh, was married with to Steve O'Shaughnessy. So um, congratulations on that memory. That is a happy memory. Linda and Jim Sunderland, 52 years last Monday. Thank you for mentioning that, Tina, and happy anniversary, Jim and Linda. 52 years. Fantastic. Uh, our son Dan and his son Carter celebrated birthdays. Grandchild, that was from the Shooks, or Shocks, uh, Russ and Joe celebrated grandchild number eight, Eli John, born August 14th. Rebecca turned, or Ellie turned six a few weeks ago. Thank you for mentioning that, Rebecca. Greatly appreciate it. Here we have some birthdays and anniversaries coming in. So we can continue to share those birthdays and anniversaries as we hear our sending. Boy, really touchy this morning. As we continue to share those birthdays and anniversaries as we listen or join along with Great is Thy Faithfulness. shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest 
and sending if i understand right rebecca you guys forgot part so after it uh if you want to unmute yourselves and then you can finish it off may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy may the lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All right, Rebecca, can you unmute yourself? And hopefully if you are the ones talking, you'll appear on everybody's screen. Let's see if we can get that to work. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Mute yourself again, maybe that didn't work as we'd hoped. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you, everybody. That is our worship for this morning. If you want to join us for fellowship, please stick around. We hope to see you tonight if you would like to. Uh, if not, we have all the other gatherings throughout the week uh, in which you can join us. And that would be great. Have a blessed, have a, a blessed day. Have a fortunate day. Have a good day, everybody.